Sex is one of the most influential and controversial words in the world. People blush and giggle, they wince. It's a taboo subject that sells a lot, from cars to doilies. To some people, sex is a sin, and it's also an obsession in American society. All of this affects how sex is perceived by American manga and anime fans. Japanese aesthetics, gender ideas, and sexuality may seem unnatural to us with our universal concepts of sexuality and gender. However, our views on sexuality and gender are far from universal. They came from our culture. Anime and manga provide a safe way to explore different sexual aspects. As you can tell, this discussion is viewer advised. Welcome to Broken Obsessed. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of sex in anime and manga. American culture blends sexuality with identity. Traditional Japanese society doesn't cover identity and sexuality in the same way, though. Manga and anime obtain this tradition. For example, in traditional culture, it's okay for men to have homosexual interests. However, this didn't neglect their duty to have a wife and raise a family. Sexuality was just a tiny part of who they were instead of of defining pillars of their identity. In the US, sexuality is a shaping part of a person's identity. Anime and manga explore various sexual ideas because it is only a small part of the character's identity. Sailor Moon, for example, contains lesbians, transgender characters, both female and male, and cross-dressing characters. Still, the story doesn't play up these proclivities as determining identity markers. They are just a piece of the character's general personality. This ties back to tradition. Sexuality was a humble part of being a samurai. Likewise, transgender and cross-dressing played a role in Kabuki. Kabuki started as an all-female production woman would dress as men until the Tokugawa government stepped in. The government designated Kabuki have to be all male because it was safer for the viewers and the performers alike. This meant males would perform female roles. Many of these men are sex symbols for samurai men with their hazy sexual and heterosexual concerns. The gender-bending stories we see in manga often refer to this tradition. While Japan doesn't make sexuality THE establishing part of a person's character, it still is a factor. Simply said, Japanese tradition views sex as a part of everyday life, moreover than a sacred art. Still, tradition has limits. As Japan westernized, it borrowed some of the West's ideas of impropriety. Article 175 of the Criminal Code made the trade and distribution of obscene material a criminal act. Still, Japan has a constitutional provision for freedom of expression. This creates comparable tension to what we see in the United States. On the one hand, you have the desire for uncensored expression of ideas and views. On the other hand, you desire not to see the material you consider damaging or offensive. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government issued a law in 2010 that committed businesses and residents to identify materials depicting sexual acts of minors as dangerous. The regulation declared such materials prevent children from developing a healthy attitude towards sex. Yukari Fujimoto, a professor of girls' manga and gender at Meihi University in Tokyo, claims the opposite. She believes the censorship of sexual material hurts children and teens. It bars them from novels that help them manage their desires and the realities of sex. Exposure to sexual material at a young age reduces the chance of committing sexual crimes, and children should gradually learn about sex. Censoring manga would prevent this. Fujimoto's statements get us to the benefits of sexuality. As seen in manga and anime, the debates surrounding censorship center on harm. Advocates of censorship desire to control the exposure of sexual imagery because they see it as harmful. On the other side are those like Fujimoto and those who profit from the scale of sexual content. The growth of manga and anime in the States makes this debate important. From 2002 to 2004, North American manga sales rose from an estimated $60 million to roughly $135 million. Sales peaked in 2007 at $210 million. Even with sales declining, manga remained and remains an essential part of the social fabric in the world, at least in my heart. <laughs> Manga still has an association with other R-rated activities. Because of its different sexual perspective, outside of hentai, sex in manga varies from other mediums. In many cases, manga's sexuality is strong, vivid, and deeply emotional. Most manga show sex as physically and emotionally charming for men, especially women. 
American culture serves men the idea that they need to be dominating and stoic. Sex is something to be appreciated because it feels good and because it's quote-unquote manly. Manga explains how the emotional aspects of sex aren't just for women. Powerful moments of tenderness and openness to the passionate relationship are masculine, more masculine than the usual male story of dominance and control. Whereas American porn degrades to their genitals, many manga and anime stories focus on exchanging emotions between characters. We're leaving hentai out of this part. Part of the interest in sexual activity is its taboo, threatening nature. What is restricted by law or religion kind of becomes charming. For example, Christianity admits this in the book of Genesis. Sex in manga teaches the beauty of extensive relationships and how sex can improve that connection. In the late 1980s, ladies' comics targeting 25 to 30 year olds gained popularity. These comics showed women's desires and alternative role models for adult women, who were most often housewives. Early ladies' comics showed sex as positive for women who enjoyed it. They concentrated on the female point of view, which helped women accept the realism of their sexuality. However, the stories featured post-marriage issues and the darker side of sex. Amane Kazumi's Shelter tells about a mother who was beaten by her husband. After one of their daughters dies in an accident, the husband's violence increases. The wife and her eldest daughter flee to a shelter for battered women. The story tracks her recovery and how she recovers her confidence and independence. Absolutely beautiful story if you ask me, except for the darker parts. Manga lets people explore stories, different sexualities, and diverse cultural perspectives. Gender-bending stories enable people to escape rigid social roles and imagine what it is like to experience life from a different gender's view. Manga allows readers to investigate alternative sexual identities and proactive problems about sex without feeling threatened or abused. Yaoi, BL, Yuri, and Dojenshi are bizarre aspects of manga. Yaoi, BL, or Boys Love, and Yuri began as Dojenshi, or self-published comics. Alternatively known as fanfiction, they became genres in their own right. Each tells alternative relationship stories and provide alternative aspects of sexuality. Yaoi and BL are made by female artists for female readers. BL focuses on the relationships among Baishonen, or beautiful boys. While Yaoi features direct relationships between men, Yaoi is actually an acronym for the Japanese Yamanashi Ochinashi Iminashi, translated as no buildup, no foreclosure, and no meaning. Yaoi may highlight homosexual relationships, but it isn't pointed at males. Manga of that type is called bara. Japanese homosexual men kind of dislike Yaoi because of their unrealistic relationships. When Yaoi and BL came in the 1970s, it rocked the male-dominated world of manga. It seemed just as kawaii designs and women started to take over shoujo. Yaoi raised eyebrows with its explicit sexuality. BL got under the censorship radar of the time because of its underage characters. By Shonen is basically the male version of waifus. Due to the gender roles at the time, women were better able to imagine idealized, strong, independent characters if they were male. Manga like Sailor Moon would later develop this, but Yaoi and BL remained popular among female readers. Despite its content and initial resistance by the male mangaka, Yaoi was more acceptable than Yuri. Yuri literally translates to Lily and deals with love between girls, a taboo subject. While we know women in Japanese history, particularly in the Edo period, had sex and relationships, it's generally not discussed. Yaoi fell within accepted samurai practices. The most popular Yuri manga, Revolutionary Girl Utena, broke ground by placing a female character in a male role. Utena doesn't want to be male. Instead, she seeks to embody the virtues male characters usually embody. Courage, strength, and passion. The story totally flips the traditional narrative. Utena, along with Sailor Moon and other titles, including Yaoi, changed the history of female sexuality and gender role. They break the Judeo-Christian record that dominates American culture for the most part. However, I'm not religious, so I don't hold that any of that against me. Most researches focus on the benefits of manga reading for women and girls. Manga lets women break from their rigid gender rules and enables them to explore taboo sexualities and different cultural perspectives. However, men see many benefits as well. As we mentioned previously, manga allows boys and men to safely explore feelings of affection, tenderness, and other emotions typically kept for women. Masculinity in America and in Japan is same-dimensional. Society requires men to be go-getters, controllers, and sexual conquistadors. 
Some of the issues in American society regarding homosexual men centers on the idea of sexual success. Men are expected to move and get women. Gay men oppose this cultural norm. They are seen as being got, preferably, than getting. Gender-bending novels such as Ron Mahaff use comedy to explore the different dimensions of masculinity. In the plot, a boy becomes a girl whenever he gets splashed with cold water. Comedy stories like Ron Mahaff stimulate the imagination and help male readers consider other possibilities for manhood. Manga also breaks the equation that romance has. Sex equals love, love equals sex. Look at many shonen stories, for example. Male figures often fall in love with female characters. Still, they never get down to business like they would in American television. When they ultimately do, such as in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, it's often off camera. The story clearly shows the consequences. Pregnancy and children are a repeated theme in manga sexuality. Fatherhood is admired, unlike in many, perhaps most American stories. Goku is a dad. Even the goofiest fathers are still active in the lives of their children. This grants an example for male readers of an option to the deadbeat dad issue found throughout in the United States. Fathers who have little or nothing to do with their children. It also contrasts against Japanese salarymen who are never home because of their work schedules. But there's different cultural reasons behind that one. Manga provides escapism, titillation, and most importantly, a different perspective. Sex is a part of the human experience. It's wrapped up in identity, morality, and taboo. Sex will continue to spark controversy and provide a means to explore different cultural and gender perspectives. How do you like our video? Would you like to see more anime and manga videos on this channel? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload and you can enjoy the excellent content we send your way. I've been Broken Obsessed in My Otaku Ways, and I will see all of you lovely people next time.